And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today we're finally going to finish this. I know this base has taken a long time, but it's just there's so many moving parts. Trying to run an entire base on one kilo of, of methane per second is just... Ugh. We, we've got most of the bits done, but there's a few bits that need some work. Like this over here, we've got these water weeds and we're trying to keep them radiated so we can hopefully get a mutated one and get an exuberant one at some point, just to match the, the sleep weed over there. Problem is, this wheeze water around here is only giving 232 rads to the adjacent ones. Uh, this one over here is giving 381, the reason being water. There's a bunch of water in here and the water is helping to block more radiation than it normally would. So we need to jack up the radiation amounts in here or it's not going to work the way we would like. But I got an idea. First up, we deconstruct all the hydroponic farm tiles and instead we make them out of the uranium ore we brought with us because it actually is slightly radioactive and should jack up the rads just a little bit. We did of course do some crop growth, but I'm okay with that. There we go. Quick changeover. Let's see if that made it enough. Okay, 247. Oh, come on. 255. Right. I think we're going to have to get rid of the middle one as well. Uh, yeah, this should take a second. All right, with that in place, all we got to do is stick down the Weez Ward seed. Oh, seriously? You know what? The auto sweeper can do it. None of you are allowed in. Come on, let the auto sweeper do it. There you go. Much closer. I'm done. As for the phosphorite, the phosphorite comes from... Oh, oh god, uh, how do I explain this mess? Well, okay, so the Drekos in here run around and eat the Bam Lily, and the Bam Lily causes them to uh, excrete phosphorite. The phosphorite gets picked up by the autosleepers, either here or here. I put a second one up here because I figured we might actually need more than I thought. Yeah, there was also some comments that pointed out we might be a bit shy, but we've doubled down, just in case we've got two Bam Lilies. We'll have uh, the wild Drekos, or the, the extra Drekos in here, and they'll consume that one. That gives us the... Phosphorite that comes over here and feeds into there and into there. So both that and that have phosphorite in them, which means this auto sweeper can auto feed that one and this auto sweeper can auto feed that resort. Done. And oh, dirt comes in here and that dirt feeds into that uh, that sleet wheat. I'm trying to automate as much as possible. This is the industrial planet, so I wanted to make it, you know, as industrial as possible. Oh, let's double check here. What are we at? 255, 263. Perfect. That's enough rads to keep that area. Well, if we do end up getting a mutated seed we want, it can go in there, plus it helps uh, increase the chances of getting a mutation in the first place. Now, over here you'll notice this bam lily is halted. Reason being, body temperature needs to be between 35 to 85 degrees. And our base is nowhere near that. Yeah, we've been cooling the whole place down. The place is actually quite chill. But we need this place to be warmer, and the great thing is it can actually go up to as high as 85 C. So what I thought we'd do is we take the ethanol. See, when you create ethanol, it comes out at 73 degrees or something along those lines? Where is it? Uh, ethanol, 73.4 degrees. Which we can just get here, run through there. We'll actually slice that off at that section. And then plug it in up there. And now we have two kilos of ethanol heated up to 70 degrees passing through here, which should drive up the temperature. And once it drives up the temperature enough, that bam lily down there will start growing. Are you? Seriously? Come on. All right, we did have to put a pipe in that, otherwise it's not classified as operational. Yeah, hydroponic styles. Doesn't matter. Done. Now we've got that sorted. Uh, we'll come back to the fertilizer plant in a minute. There's a couple of other things we should take care of first. One is the cooling loop. Now, uh, oh god. Yes, this giant yellow cooling loop full of blue liquid is super coolant. That goes all the way around the base and cools down everything, including these... Uh, these ethanol distilleries. The ethanol distilleries do generate a fair bit of heat, but it's about 4.5 kDTUs, but it's not really that bad. What's really more annoying is the outputs they have, which is the ethanol at 70 degrees. And I think the dirt comes out pretty hot as well. Yeah, it's like 87 degrees for the dirt. But we don't really mind so much. We just dump that straight into the, uh, the compost anyway, so meh. But we don't have enough brute force cooling from the methane. Like All of this uh, methane we're bringing in from space is quite chill and we're using that to actually heat up the... or we're using the heat from our base to heat up the, the methane. But there's just not enough chill in total. So what we did was we run that cooling loop through this aqua tuner right here and that just adds on a little bit of extra chill if and when we need it. So we burn a bit of power and oh yeah that yellow stuff down there is actually polluted water. More greenish. It just looks yellowish for some reason. I don't know why. I presume it's the yellow pipes. For our next step, oh, fertilizer in a minute. No, first we are going to line the bottom of our rocket silos. We are going to be doing a bunch of rocket trips with these and we don't want any maintenance. So that means we're going to do a little trick like we did back here where we have this infinitely heat resistant refined carbon. Well, not infinitely heat resistant, but you need to go up to 4,300 degrees to melt it, which that's just not going to happen. So let's do a quick bit of a refit here. 
So every single tile now has one kilo of coal on it. Every single one. So all we do is deconstruct all of these. And then we have to sweep up just the sedimentary rock and leave the one kilo of coal behind. That's going to be a little bit annoying. We'll have to basically sweep like this. Yes, I know, a little bit time consuming and micromanaging, but uh, the results are worth it. Almost done. So close. Now all we have to do is wait until a rocket comes back and heats up this whole area. We could try artificially heating it, but why bother? There'll be a rocket along shortly to do all of that for us. Now, I'm thinking next up... Yeah, fertilizer. I want to get this fertilizer section sorted. Now this thing emits natural gas, and I thought we could use that natural gas to power our gas range, because, well, currently all that natural gas is going into... I would remove some from the generators, but I like keeping the power. At the same time, I thought we would tap into this natural gas geyser down there. So right now, you notice this entire place is a vacuum, and we even have a vacuum seal there. So, hmm, what about we dig down a little something like that? Now, plugging in this natural gas geyser is probably a little bit against the spirit of the playthrough, but at the same time, it does just make powering this gas range that much simpler. But it does introduce one other complication. This stuff heats up to 150 C, which might overheat this room a bit. More importantly, the fertilizer we're producing in here, well, it's got a bit of a problem. If its temperature goes above, where is the property section? Melting point, 125 C. So if its temperature goes above that, it will turn into a dirt tile. So just to make sure nothing like that happens, we've uh, basically routed the ethanol line through here. So the ethanol line will come through and actually cool down this section. So just to recap, the ethanol will make sure this stays above 70C, and it will make sure that this stays a little bit, well, hopefully about 80C or something like that, because otherwise the ethanol will uh, oh, flash to gas. Double check that one. The ethanol should stay fine until vaporization point 78.4. Hmm. We'll risk it. I'm okay with that. I mean... A few degrees of... Yeah, it's unlikely we'll be generating that much heat in here, especially considering we'll only be using tiny amounts of gas and we'll only be using small amounts of fertilizer. But if that comes back to bite me in the butt, yeah, it's my own fault. Now that fertilizer is sorted, what we're going to do is put in a farm station right here. This... Well, we don't have someone who's qualified to farm just yet, but that should allow us to apply fertilizer to the seed wheat and to the water wheat to jack, jack, jack up production. Uh, we'll see how that works out. Oh. Over here, we're going to set this atmos sensor to 2 kgs. Now, you'll be wondering where all of that uh, natural gas came from, considering this is dormant. Well, we just fired over some extra methane, and then we stole that methane, stuck it in here, and let it cool heat up. It did chill the place down a bit, dumping it all in, but we now have enough natural gas. That, that should get pumped out through there, and we'll go down through this section and through to our stove. That will allow us to cook up the necessary, where is it? Frostburgers. Yes, forever. Just do Frostburgers forever. Don't bother stopping, ever. Just needs frost buns, lettuce, and barbecue. And on this, we're going to queue up barbecue and frost buns forever. Done. Now we just need a cook to do all of that. I think we've got a decent amount of meat. Well, meat is going to be the main problem right, the, right now. Namely because we have so much sleep wheat. We have how much? 138 sleet wheat grains. Yeah, that's that's been going for a while. No lettuce just yet, and we've only got four slicksters. Oh my god, okay. We'll have four more along shortly, but this is we're going to let this slowly ramp up. I don't want to throw in a massive population really quickly, because then what happens is they die out all at the same time, and you end up with this massive problem with population later on. Instead, we're just going to do this the slow and steady route. In the meantime, that means I think... Ooh, that copper volcano is going to be fun. You know what? Let's start with something simple. Let's just grab a quick gold volcano and slap a tamer on it. Just a, a very simple, basic one. While we're finishing this off, we do have a rocket due to arrive shortly, and when it does, it should heat up all of those tiles quite nicely. We should only need the temperature to get to about 276... Well, add on an extra 3 degrees. Uh, so 280 degrees, once it hits that, all of that coal should turn into refined carbon. Yeah, the question is how much of it does it. Come on, there you go. Oh well, that's a perfect time for a saving, but it's, it's... Wait, what? That is? Huh. I was kind of expecting a little bit more, to be honest. That's okay, we can launch and land the rocket a few times more if needs be. And in fact, you should stay indoors for a little while longer. You've got plenty of oxalite, you got plenty of berry sludge. You'll be fine. In fact, you will probably become a permanent member of this colony very shortly. 
almost done. All we gotta do is just seal this area up, and then we can just let the volcano turn this all to steam. In theory, and I think we just destroyed a bunch of carbon dioxide, but I don't care. Well, this is going to be incredibly simple. We're using the conveyor meter because this sort of simplifies things quite a bit. If we grab, say, refined metals, stick in gold, what should happen is that picks it up, and then it sort of gets slowly metered across the line. And one second, once it gets to there, you're only going to have one kilo come out per second. That should allow the temperature to go down a lot more rapidly. I think as this thing spits out, on average, about a third of a kilo per second across its entire life cycle. So we're, we're taking it three times faster than we should, but I don't think it'll make a difference. As long as it's metered down to one kilo, and we eventually fill this place up with steam, it should turn most of it into the necessary... Well, it should cool it down close enough that we don't have to care. Oh, and to make sure that it definitely stays cool, we'll just... Uh, one second. We'll make sure it's included in our giant cooling loop, which will cool down the steam turbine and cool down the stuff going through here. And I think we're done on this one. Let's just see what happens when this erupts, though. And, yeah, off it goes. How's the gold looking in here? Uh, Temperature-wise, 60? <laughs> we'll find out what happens once the water starts to boil. I think that's when it would get really interesting. But for now, it's cold enough that I don't mind. As long as it's coming out under 200 degrees, we should be able to chill down the rest of it. I mean, it's gold. You can brute force the rest of it. It's not even that much of a problem. And... done? Wow. Eh. I think I'll call that a win. Okay, down here, we're doing something identical. Done. Same again, only this time with cobalt. And um, what are you doing? Oh, they're sweeping up the last of the debris. Uh, in fact, sweep the last of that and then we'll seal it. I don't want any of the steam getting out or potentially breaking our liquid lock. Wait, wait, let's zap analyze it first. Fine, we'll, we'll, we'll analyze the volcano, then we'll seal it up. But while zap's doing that, I think it's time we got started on the difficult one. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit of a tricky one to gain access to. I think I'm just going to solidify the copper. There's no way we can save that, as in, since there's so much of it on one tile, when we cool it down, it's just going to turn into a solid tile, and we'll lose half the mass when we dig it out. But, yeah, it's just the, the difficulty of trying to stretch that out some way where we only have a small enough mass. Yeah, no, no, not worth it, not worth it. So, the plan here is we're going to dump a bunch of water along here, push out all the gases, and then strap some te steam turbines on top. And this thing's going to be hot. It's 1900 degrees in there, so we're going to have to take some special precautions to stop our steam turbines from, you know, boiling the surrounding environment and overheating and cause us masses of problems. And why is there water flowing over the edge? Oh. Place is a little warm, is it? Oh. Oops. What the hell? Ah, the insulated tiles in here are causing the water to flash to steam because the insulated tiles have been heated up. That's really inconvenient. Ah, uh, You know what, we're just gonna have to eat it. We'll eat the heat. We just need to get that temperature down low enough. Or is there anything we could put down there that might help? I think. I don't think there's anything we can do. If we put an oil on top of that, it will also cause problems. If we put, like, anything we put on there is going to boil. We just gotta basically eat the, eat it until the temperature gets down low enough that some water can actually sustain itself here. Uh, okay, it's fine. Just a minor complication with an awful lot of heat attached to it. At least it's not melting the plastic up there. This is gonna put an awful lot of strain on our cooling loop. Uh, it'll be fine. It's a minor inconvenience. We, we got this. Well, we've just about got it done. The place is... Well, it's toasty. But we're going to plug in the cooling loop anyway. A couple of rotations to sort that out. Okay, come on. There you go. Now, one problem we're going to have is this is going to be way too hot. And since it's going to be so hot, the steam turbines are going to generate way more heat. Once you go above 200 degrees uh, input, steam turbines heat output just keeps going up and up and up. So if we put in 1,000 degrees steam, we're going to get out five times as much heat as we would if we just had to put in 200 degrees steam. Actually, it might be more. Oh, wait, never mind. You know what? That's not important. What is important is we're going to stick in a thermal sensor right there. And we're going to give it an automation wire. No need for steel. Shouldn't get that hot here. Famous last words. And then what we'll do is we'll have it so that the temperature here goes above a certain amount. We'll have it shut off the steam turbine so it's no longer draining heat out of this area. Now, what temperature to set it to is the question. Now, oh, damn it, I think I need more super coolant, do I? What the? Guys. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, it'll, it'll, 
I have a big spare tank of super coolant there just in case. And that's going to provide an extra 688 blobs, which should be enough to fill up the rest of that loop. If it's not, we can send over more super coolant. All right, the moment of truth. We've got the temperature down here, around here, to, down to about 30 degrees. We could leave it a few more rotations, but I want to see what happens. We're going to deconstruct these tiles diagonally. Uh, actually, we'll, we'll just start with one and see what happens from there. And it's about to hit nighttime. You know what? Let, let's wait till this nighttime save passes before we do this. It's a new dawn, and it's time to see what happens when we remove that tile. Uh, we've got 34 kilos of steam in there, but oh, let's slow that down a tiny bit. And insta steaminess. Yep, there we go. Water starts a boiling. Should have put in some temperature shift plates. You know what? No need, no need. It's fine. And no. Come on, seriously. I suppose there's a, a little bit of a problem transferring the temperature as rapidly as needs be. Oh, okay. You, you sure you don't want to boil a bit more? Fine, we can uh, speed this along nicely if you would like. Wait a minute, what the? There's 330 degree stream. Inputs blocked? Five inputs blocked? How are, how are the inputs blocked? Disabled by automation grid? No, you're not. Oh. Never mind, there we go. My bad, and I think we'll actually leave that off for a second, will we? Ooh, 450 degrees. I think the rest of that will slowly start to boil across there. Yeah, let's leave it a minute. How much heat are you producing? 150 kilo DTUs. Um, that's a wee bit. For example, these things only produce 4.5. Um, in fact, these things are, are, are minuscule. Seven of these produce about the same amount of heat as one plastic press. So, yeah, this thing's pretty monstrous over here. 150 kilo DTUs as opposed to 4.5 of a, an ethanol distillery. It's, it's fine. It's probably fine. Yeah, we just got to make sure it doesn't overheat. That's all. Just got to make sure it doesn't overheat. Oh, other one started up as well. Looks like the heat has traveled far enough. Okay. Hmm. Still not going to solidify just yet. I have a strange feeling this might take a little bit of time. Oh, one thing, in case you're wondering why I'm taking the super coolant from down here as opposed to up here where it would seem to be simpler and shorter to do, it's because this returns it back here to just before the aqua tuner, meaning if we do dump too much heat into it, the aqua tuner has a chance to say something about it before it goes back up and into the rest of the base. Figured it was the smart choice for... God, this is going to be a monstrous amount of heat we have to destroy. Just monstrous. This is going to take a while. I think it's getting close to solidifying. You can see little bits of copper just forming and magic. That's something you don't see every day. Uh, you know what? Let's speed this up. Actually, no. I'm not going to touch it. it. Seems to be working, and if I remove that, it might cause some untoward consequence. So we'll just let it slowly do what it's doing. It seems to be doing exactly what it needs to. And actually, what's the steam pressure? 276, or temperature, 270. It's not even that bad. Heat-wise, we're getting 110... Kill the DTUs, that's still... Okay, it's not wonderful. Uh, Temperature-wise, super coolant loop is... Handling it, like a champ. It's not perfect or anything, but I'm pretty sure our base is not suffering too badly from all of this. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful. We actually planned ahead and got this to work right. All right, next up, I'm going to do one more volcano over here because this is an industrial planet and it's just covered in an enormous amount of stuff. Oh. And over here we're putting in some mesh tiles. I want to make sure that some of these slicksters, once we max out these ranches, some of these slicksters will not be necessary. They'll pop out and run around the place. And when they, they do excrete oil, we want it to fall down to the bottom if at all possible. Uh, over here, yeah, another gold tamer. Well, while that was going on, uh, this appears to have finally solidified. And the temperature is actually dropping a lot more rapidly now. Mm, and the temperature in here has gone up far more. It seems exchanging temperature with the solid tiles is much better than exchanging it with the liquid. Uh, how much heat are we generating? 222 kilodetes of heat. That's... That's a fair bit. Lord, how are you doing? Yeah, you're fine. That cooling loop. Just so glad we did that giant base style cooling loop. Though this one's going to be a little bit more awkward. It's really far away. I think we might just go with a self-cooling one, though I haven't tried one of those in ages. I don't know if they still work or if they've patched that out. This one posed a bit of a challenge, considering how far it is away from our cooling loop. Our cooling loop is way over here, which, you know, it's a bit of a distance. 
So instead, we just went to, with a self cooling steam turbine, as in the 95C water coming out of here should cool down the steam turbine enough to keep up with a single gold volcano normally. And uh, what's the output on this? 333. Maybe. Maybe we will find out. I'm okay to test it. Uh, you can go one kilo per second. And as well as that, since we're not sending it all the way back to our industrial brick. Oh, damn it. I forgot to put in the automation in there. Yeah, we need to put an automation wire right up uh, there. And what that should do is means every time this thing hits one kilo of one kilo of pass through, it'll send a reset signal. So it'll just keep sending through one kilo. I was up until this point using a switch, but it turns out you can just use a, an automation wire from one to the other. Probably should have figured that out a while ago. All right, and we'll just set this to gold. And that's it. Done. So that's how many volcanoes tamed now? One, two, three. And this one over here is, well, we're working on it. It's down to 225. So could lead to use 80 apiece. Temperature in here is 222. We're almost down to reasonable operating temperatures. That's, uh, actually, we can take out that tile now. I think we're fairly safe on that front. We have 500 kilos of copper there, and then 3.8 tons. Yeah, many, many, many tons. Oh, well, you know, we did want more copper on here. I was starting to run out of copper to use for the, the power spine. The power spine is made almost entirely out of copper wire, and we used quite a lot of it. Oh, wow, so that's... That's our fourth vol well, that's our fourth volcano down, and we have a fifth one over there we gotta take care of. I'm also gonna wall in this uh, CO2 guy CO2 ah, carbon dioxide geyser. We don't need it. Uh, at the same point, I did make a mistake over here. This was supposed to drain the uh, the CO2 out of here the moment it went below five kilos in pressure, and it was doing that quite successfully until I made the mistake of hooking up this gas pump here, which somehow stifled that from sending gas up. So until we put in the the directional flow for the bridge. So our pressure has gotten a little bit high here at 6.4 kilos, but as so long as it got that we got there before it hit 10 kilos, at which point it would stifle the trees, is a good thing. This extra pump here comes in at about 5.5 kilos. So this pumps out pretty much all the time, and this pumps occasionally. And those two, they're filling up the Sixter Ranch most of the time. One kilo of carbon dioxide can feed more than all the, all the Sixers we're going to be running, so it should be grand. Now, with that done, you know what, a uh, quick sweep out there. Well, that seals up that one. We've got the natural gas geyser taken care of. I We don't care about the hot fluid oxygen vent. Can't really use it. Well, we could, but it would be against the sort of the spirit of the whole everything has to touch a coup. Now, okay, now we got one last volcano to go, the iron volcano. Well, I still got to do that one, but the iron volcano goes first. Nothing too fancy. Same thing again. The design we've somehow sort of stumbled upon this round. Uh, nope, I want the heavy watch joint plate made out of copper. What we want to do here is put a joint plate right about there, and that should allow us to get the heavy watt wire over to the steam turbine. It'll generate a bit of power. We might as well take advantage of it. And done. That connects up the steam turbine to the main grid. The hard part, though, is going to be the actual cooling. You see, we have a lot of piping around this area. This base is... Yeah, it's got that real organic look to it, despite this being reasonably well planned. Um, hmm... Question is, how do we get the cooling loop over there? We might just have to go up here and around. I think. Well, that was a horrifying mess. But we managed to move all the piping, get everything around the place, and now you can hook up there, you can hook up there, and we've extended the cooling loop. I think. Yep. Up, 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 and around. Perfect! Also, now we shall uncover this iron volcano and we'll give it a good analysis as well. This is so many volcanoes on this map. Then we can, you know what, just stick them all in. We'll take everything that's lying around the place, we'll dump it in there. It should get limited out to one item per second and then get dumped up there. Done. I think that's, yep, that's the iron volcano done. And you know what, we'll seal it in as well, just in case it tries to damage that liquid lock. You never know, when the steam starts to float around the place, it can dislodge the naphtha and... Damn it, I never took out the carbon dioxide. I could have sworn I removed all the carbon dioxide. Where did all the... Ah. Damn it. Well, never mind. That first eruption just produced enough steam, but that's... Okay, for some reason, I somehow left carbon dioxide in there, and I don't mind. I don't mind. It's, it's, it's like, I don't know how many volcanoes at this point today. That's, that's good enough. It is good enough. Uh, you can brick up there, and that's vacuum. Perfect. There's such a small amount of carbon dioxide in this steam should push most of it out of the way. Like, there's what? Uh, where is the carbon dioxide gone? There a second ago. Ah, uh, there we are. It's seven kilos. The steam's going to be 70 plus, so it'll be all confined to one tile, and it'll probably end up there in the bottom right-hand corner. Assuming we... 
Oh, sorry, Zaf. Did not mean to lock you in there. Uh, we'll we'll let you out. Oopsie. Now, getting all of this iron, which is kind of hot, down to our industrial brick seemed like a bit of a problem. And then I thought, wait, nope, not there. Give me that conveyor chute. Put it right there. And what we can do is we can drop this sucker the whole way down. Now, we don't have a catching point yet. But what we can do is put that... Oh. I'll have to move the power wire slightly, and uh, that can be arranged. All right, everything is in position. All we have to do now is go all the way back up to the top. Make sure that's at one. Uh, oh, yeah, I sort of selected everything to clear that place out, didn't I? One second, select refined metal iron, and then it will start chucking it in. Uh, it goes up as far as there, then it gets stopped and has to come out in one kilo packets, and it's instantly down to temperature. In fact, what's the temperature in here? 716 degrees before it gets on the rail. By the time it gets to the exit, we're looking at eh, 160. That's very livable with. Especially considering we've got some cooling going on right at the top there, so... Hmm. Then it falls all the way down to here. And... Doosh. Lands right on top of a nice chill metal plate that has a bit of coolant going through it. Problem solved. Oh, oh. And for this one over here, since it was so far away, I was not bothered running a conveyor rail that far. So instead, we just dump it in here in a vacuum sealed room. It'll be like 150 degrees or something like that, but who cares? Whenever people go to get it, they can grab it then. All right. Okay, how have we not finished this map already? It feels like I've been playing this for an eternity. <laughs> in a good way, sort of. <laughs> okay, we got our fertilizer sorted, we got our tree sorted. In fact, in terms of water, we've got a backlog. Um, yeah, all the water coming from over here goes into this liquid tank here to feed the trees. If the trees have enough water, the liquid backs up into this tank, which it has. There's more than five tons of backup water in there. And then the overflow goes up here and gets sent into the fertilizer section, where there's another five tons of backup. That was overkill, to be honest. Way, way overkill, but I just put it in anyway. And then the rest of it gets overflowed and dumped out at the top of the map. We're literally venting water into space because we have too much. And this is what we're capable of supporting. Ooh, how's this looking? You are perfect. You're down to 116 kilos, or 116C. We can go in and crack that open and actually finish off that volcano timer. But I'm gonna do that in the background. Oh man, I need to put like about eight to ten hours just to iron out all the kinks in this, and we need to start moving people in. We finally got a whole bunch of meat. I think has just popped. Uh, where is it? Oh, a whole bunch of them popped, and we got a. They basically got crude oil first, and then. A molten sticker hatched and it created a little thin layer of petroleum and now all of the ones drowned instantly instantly so i'm still waiting for a pincher row to show up we have hatched so many of them oh and because they patched the game now we only get 70 kilos of sand out of these or actually no uh sorry it's less than 70 kilos of sand we only get 50 percent of the consumed mass which is 35 kilos of sand which has completely thrown off all my numbers because i was depending on that sand to sieve the water for the toilets and for the sleet wheat. But now we're going to need to get make up the difference. I don't think it's a full 70 kilos more polluted dirt we need. But what I am going to do is any polluted dirt or rot pile that we harvest from sleet wheat will get fed into these poke shells. And I think I'm going to have to put in a timer to dump in some extra polluted dirt in here so that these, uh, these sort of wild, not wild ones, these backup ones generate a little bit of sand as well. And that should uh, carry us over the hump. Unless I want to redesign it and make a, a dual poke shell ranch, which I'd prefer not to, to be honest. Anyway, let's take one last look at this stupidity. Oh my god. There's only, what, one kilo of methane flowing in here, and radiation-wise, all grand, except for those two splotches where we've got the wheeze warts. Conveyor rails are... Yeah, that's a bit funky. That's that's a fair few conveyor rails, and I still have to finish off the copper volcano. Automation-wise, almost nothing. Look at that. There's just tiny amounts of automation, but does the job. Uh, Room-wise, plenty of rooms, mostly ranches, uh, except for that one greenhouse we've got over there. Plenty of plants, but it's all trees. In fact, we only have three, four. We only have four crops, four plants that are actually food. Well, it's one way to go about things. Uh, Decor-wise, yeah, it's horrifying. Just, just horrifying everywhere. Loads of gases going everywhere. Loads of liquids, in fact. Oh, wow, that is so many liquids. And, yep, overview's looking pretty good. And temperature-wise, also beautiful. Look at that, all the living areas pretty much everywhere. Nice and balmy. Finally, power. Hey. Eh. I need to put in about, ooh, yeah, I'm going to need to put in about 8 to 10 hours in the background just to polish this off and then finish it up. I got to do, I have to make some changes to the Spacefarer module so that they can run on Frostburgers. The problem is right now, we won't have a replenishable supply of 
berry sludge to send them on their missions to get the necessary stuff to feed the water weed, so the beach stone and the salt water. So we need to find a way to deep freeze frost burgers in a space capsule indefinitely. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. Anyway, I'm gonna cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck.